Will there ever be a replacement mission for the cancelled Dear Moon Lunar Round Trip mission? So when can we expect a SpaceX Starship to circle the Moon? And how would such a mission look? Ever since the cancellation of the Dear Moon mission in June of this year, I've been asking myself these questions and so let's try to think about when we can expect an orbiting of the Moon with a Starship and how such a mission would look when compared to the cancelled Dear Moon mission. And who would even pilot such a mission? And when can we expect it? It was in September 2018 that the Dear Moon mission was announced by the Japanese entrepreneur Yuzaku Meizawa on stage together with Elon Musk. It was a pretty epic moment which I remember very well and let me say that I was very hyped back then. The mission was to circumvent the Moon in a starship in the year 2023 with a crew of 9 people, which from back then maybe seemed kind of doable. That would have been Yuzaku Meizawa himself and 8 artists chosen from various fields where basically everybody could apply. The entire mission duration was planned to have been 6 days circumventing the moon exactly once on a so-called free return trajectory. However, the cancellation of the mission was unfortunately announced in June of this year. The reasons as to why this happened are probably twofold. First of all, the development of Starship took a lot longer than many would have wanted to believe back then. And secondly, it is rumored that Yuzaku's finances don't look as good anymore as they did back in 2018. So the question then of course arises, will there be some sort of replacement mission for the Dear Moon mission? I personally think yes. And I think it's also pretty evident what name the mission will have and even who will pilot it. With the recent great advancement in SpaceX's Starship program at Starbase Texas, the dream of a fully functioning Starship capable of not only reaching low Earth orbit, but also the Moon and later even Mars, seems closer than it ever was. The next Starship fly tests will have Starship either land vertically on land or maybe it will already be caught by the Mechazilla launch tower arms the same way that the Super Heavy Booster has been caught in the latest fly test. Then it won't be long until Starship will see repeated payload launches, namely of the next generation Starlink satellites, the so-called V3s, which will enable much higher data transmission rates and thus much faster up and download speeds for worldwide internet access. Then, when we see repeated Starship launches without any major incidents, then we will see the Polaris Dawn 2 mission take place. This will be the first manned mission of a Starship, where Starship will orbit the Earth a few times, fully crewed. Jared Isaacman will pilot that mission, the same person who already piloted the Polaris Dawn mission in September this year, where we could witness the first private spacewalk, or let's say, semi-spacewalk, and he also piloted the Inspiration 4 mission back in 2021. So he does already have quite some experience when it comes to piloting SpaceX hardware. So in the Polaris Dawn 2 mission, he will be the first person to pilot a Starship and it will be the first manned flight test of the Starship Super Heavy system. Who will accompany him on this mission is as of now yet to be determined. And therefore the next logical step in the Polaris Dawn line of missions would be in my opinion a lunar round trip mission, which might be called the Polaris Dawn 3 mission. Think about it. The Polaris Dawn missions are successively increasing their achievements, so with every new Polaris Dawn mission, the achievement level is increased dramatically as opposed to the mission that came before. Hence, how would you top the first crewed flight of a starship orbiting the Earth? That is correct, by orbiting the Moon. In fact, and that is the beauty of Starship, circumventing the Moon would not be much more difficult than circumventing the Earth. This might at first sound really counterintuitive, for was Apollo 8 back in the day not a much more complicated mission design than the previous Apollo test missions in low Earth orbit? Well, as opposed to the Moon missions of the 60s and early 70s, the Starship does not require any additional hardware. So once you have it in orbit, 
you only need enough fuel to make it to the moon and back again. That's it. It really comes down to the fuel requirements. Now logically, such a circumlunar mission would require quite a lot of fuel. Because Starship would need to perform several burns of the Raptor engines in order to get there and back again. First to get to the moon and leave Earth orbit, a process which is called translunar injection burn. Then mid-course corrections on the way to the moon, then deceleration towards the moon, depending on how many times one would want to circle the moon of course, and then another burn to get back to Earth, the so-called trans-Earth injection and then two further mid-course corrections and then another deceleration burn before inserting back to low Earth orbit. And then after that, Starship would enter Earth's atmosphere and be caught by the Mechazilla launch tower arms. So therefore, for such a circumlunar mission, Starship would of course be needed to be fueled up in low Earth orbit. This would then of course require orbital refueling of the Starship to work, since the fuel is far too heavy to be brought up directly with the Starship itself. The dry mass of a Starship is on the order of about 100 metric tons, plus minus of course a few tons, but fully fueled up, this thing would weigh 1300 metric tons, 13 times more. So you cannot just fly up with the entire fuel because the super heavy booster can only bring about 150 to maybe in the future a maximum of say 250 metric tons to low earth orbit, which is already a lot more than the Saturn V could bring up. So for a hypothetical Polaris Dawn 3 lunar round trip mission, we really would need orbital refueling to work. And so this would depend on how soon we would see orbital refueling. I personally think that SpaceX will try orbital refueling very soon, possibly within the next two years, especially considering all the excellent progress that we have currently seen from Starship. So therefore, if you would ask me when could we see such a hypothetical Polaris Dawn 3 mission to take place, realistically I would say maybe in 2027 or maybe in 2028, depending on how well things are going. As for the mission itself, as I said, the beautiful thing about Starship is that it has a huge interior volume. So the astronauts won't really care too much if they would orbit Earth for a few days or travel to the Moon for a few days and back. The experience itself within Starship would not be so different. Except of course for the much more insane and awesome adventure that they would have in circling the Moon and seeing the far side of the Moon with their own eyes. Now that would of course be quite something, and it would be very inspiring for many. And who knows, if NASA's Artemis program continues with all the delays and cost overruns and even more delays, I wouldn't be surprised if actually Polaris Dawn 3 could circumvent the Moon at, let's say, a similar time as the Artemis 2 mission, which keeps getting postponed and postponed and might see another delay again into 2026. One thing is for sure, a hypothetical Polaris Dawn 3 mission will cost a fraction of Artemis 2 and will show the insane capabilities of Starship. The people on Polaris Dawn 3 would certainly have a lot more fun with 1000 cubic meters of huge interior volume in Starship as opposed to the unlucky Artemis 2 astronauts cramped into that hilariously small Orion capsule with its 20 cubic meters of pressurized volume, about 50 times less interior volume than a Starship. Now if you could circle the Moon in a vehicle, would you rather circle it in a Starship or in an Orion capsule? Price question. Anyways, it's fun to speculate a bit about a hypothetical Polaris Dawn 3 mission and I would think it would make a lot of sense for it to hopefully be the first crewed lunar round trip mission in a SpaceX Starship. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe because we will continue making lots of videos on human spaceflight and other interesting technological developments. And please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because this would allow us to make even higher quality videos. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day wherever you are and see you next time.